And then, of course, that allows me to say welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is Thursday night, August 15th, 2024. You know, <laughs> that's right. It's time to grab your ankles. Spend a couple hours. With yeah. your favorite Thursday night duo, of course. That's right. You fucked around and you found out we're on the radio again. And if this is your first time finding Liberty Radio, yeah. hashtag welcome home. To find we're out more, fuck around. You. And That's we're right. glad to have you. That's right. Also, big shout out to Mark well, it was at only... Studio 8424 and the TMP for all the love. Appreciate yeah. it, homie. Yeah, again, not not to beat a thoroughly a thoroughly dead and decomposing horse at this point. Um but it was only Rumble that we were not on last Thursday. We were in all of the other places last Thursday night. We were we were live on Odyssey. We were live on the Twitch channel. We were live on BitChute for crying out loud. Don't have to pay them any money, Elon Musk. To stream three hours a, a night, four nights a week. Elon Musk, you greedy bastard. We were even live on the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. The only one that the stream did not get fed to for some reason was Rumble. And the interesting thing about it is OBDM podcast had the exact same problem with their broadcast. Last night, everything went through fine, except for Rumble. Sensing a pattern here. Yeah. Connect the bloody dots, David Ike. Yeah, I'm. I'm Man, guessing there's... they don't call them the the PayPal Mafia for nothing, right? Man, there's there's just so much, so much to go over. I've really been doing a lot of research. You think? Really? Yeah watching a lot of other shows um uh like uh that that crazy fucking judge down in Brazil de Moraes um well that's not how it's spelled but it's some portuguese so anyways uh, the 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 crazy censorship judge on the brazilian um court um um Alejandro de Moraes uh, he you know he's he's a uh, another one of these uh free speech warriors in other words, trying to stop free speech. Kind of like some of those um, bullies and dear old Blighty um, threatening the, the Yankees to, to hold your tongue across that pond or we might extradite you. But don't worry. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know, like uh, Air Starmer. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag Queer Stormer. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I thought it was Queer Stalin. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Queer That's neither Stalin's here nor better. there. Both we should get that going though. Hashtag queer Stalin. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um K W E E R. Just so he knows. Or no, E I R. Yeah, that's right. Because he has the, the, the queer spelling of of Kier. The the illegitimate militarily installed Biden Harris regime has actually already paved the way for extradition of Americans uh to uh UK or EU really? um, for, uh, you know, violations of their laws. Because uh, who needs sovereignty when you've got good global governance? I mean, come on. Isn't that why the WHO gets all these countries to sign off on all this crap? I mean, shout out Tedros. Hey, fuck yourself, buddy. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Speaking uh, of Tedros. And, Speaking and who, of who Tedros, forget, dude. Um, is it? Is it Ursula fond of lying? No, 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 no. We can't, we can't move on from Tedros. We got to stop at Tedros. You said the magic word. Yeah. You, you said the teddy bear word, right? It's just big, I, he's a big old teddy just bear. He's just you. misunderstood. Y'all just don't. He doesn't speak English well. It's not his first language. Y'all, y'all are getting. He gets the emphasis on the wrong part of the word and all that stuff. It happens all the time. It's just big misunderstanding. He's a, he's a big, cuddly guy. But they finally, they, they finally got their, their money pox emergency. Did you see that? Yeah. 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 That, that's why, that, that was I'm my I'm so segue. happy for him. You cut me to the punch again, but I'd already laid the basketball off the backboard. You yeah. know what to do. You yeah. know what to do. Well, dude, you don't I'm even just, need a trampoline. I'm so, I'm so overjoyed 
uh, that, that they've finally been able to, to push this fucking fat pig over the finish line, man. They've been working so hard on it for such a long time. It just, I thought, I it, thought it, monkey it, pox was going to make the American billboard right there, top man. 40 when, uh, when the, the crazy monkey got loose in Pennsylvania. No, 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 no. But we, but no, we had to wait seventeen more fucking months. That's right. Months. That's God right. Damn it. You gotta let it. In, it's called incubation, Yona. You gotta let it incubate. Man, Pennsylvania just keeps giving and giving this year. But whether it's grazing a Cheeto's ear or uh, releasing um, uh, well, pandemic uh, monkeys, uh, it, Meme at Oz. Uh, what's his name? Here's the, the reason guy why from the Munsters. Here's oh, the uh, reason Festerman. why. Fet- John Fetterman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, Pennsylvania, as you know, Yona, is the keystone state. That's right. The keystone, obviously, being the cornerstone, the stone that is, is laid first when the masonry starts getting put in, right? That's Pennsylvania. Right. And the deepest pit in Pennsylvania, of course, is, a, is also known as Beaver County. Uh, well, that's true. Richard Grove for clarification. That's right. Okay. But no, it's... Uh, Pennsylvania is a big Freemasonry state, so of course they're they're gonna they're gonna trial shit there, you know. Yeah, there, there's uh, just, it's just replete, replete with history, um, and interestingly enough, um, I was on an amazing uh, international phone call earlier today with some of my international patrons. Damn, that sounds uh, expensive. Uh, we were on Telegram. Um, but uh, uh, my, my uh, guitarist, uh, dead fella, over there in uh, Bangladesh, and uh, his friend, our mutual friend, uh, over in the lovely KSA, uh, for, for the uninitiated, that's uh, Saudi Arabia, kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, because it turns out, in many ways, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in terms of its labor pool, is much like the United States, where they have entire communities of people that speak a different language, and they do all the lawn work and service industry jobs. So, like, for example, when... Um, uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, right? So, whether you're talking um, Qatar, um, Bahrain, Kuwait, uh, Iraq, um, well, not so much Iraq, but moreover... Um, uh, or United Arab Emirates, however you want to say. Um, shout out Abu Dhabi. Uh, and, uh, of course, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, they all employ literally hundreds of thousands, and in the case of uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, over a million um, Southeast Asian workers. Um, Uh, Dubai is rather famous for its use of international workers, as is um, um, Qatar or Qatar, however the fuck you want to say. I don't care. Yeah, Um, I thought it was Qatar. It's Qatar. And and it's like as guttural as you can do it. Like Qatar. Yeah, Qatar. Because the Q is in the back of the throat, just like uh, Akuwait, Qatar. Kormasan. Like like that, but Qatar. Ismiona. Anyways, um, I just said, uh, my name's Yon and I love Arabic. There you go. Uh, definitely makes me a terrorist. But uh, wasn't I already a terrorist? I mean, come on, folks. The fucking engines fighting the cowboys? We're the original terrorists. People yeah. forget so quickly the original devils and savages and heathens was us. We've been replaced. By foreign nationals. But you know what I'm saying? I think it's time for Native Americans to take back all of the racial epithets and own them. And that and that's why, oh wait, we already did that with the American Indian movement. And we already yeah. received the blowback. <laughs> and Leonard Peltier is still in jail. Never mind. Moving on. Yeah. Another story developed. It has been tried. Yeah. Didn't is, go uh, well. I wouldn't recommend ripping- it. Yeah. Didn't look like a lot of fun. No, no. Uh, but shout out to Russell Means and um, Clyde Betancourt and all the homies yeah. keeping it real. Uh, as people found out, thanks to uh, Ochechi Shakowin at the Pine Ridge uh, Sioux Indian Reservation in South Dakota. You know, we, we, we still get together. We don't just powwow. Sometimes we send our water protectors and, and, and we fight the um, 
corporate militaries and mercenaries with their drones and military equipment. Shout out Triple Canopy. Um, (laughs) Because, you know, South Dakota State Police definitely need help to prosecute that Dakota Access Pipeline. But ah, it's it's water under the bridge. You know, they were going to run that pipeline through Pierre and the white people. We went over that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, we it's old news, but there's, that's we actually what gets we got a good, pretty Sturgis. good clip out of that. There was uh, quite R- a few uh, people that saw that clip too, just to let you uh, know. Uh, see, uh, the the segue was through South Dakota to get my way over to Sturgis. Wow, what's going on, in Sturgis? Every year, all the bikers, yeah, the uh, Harley riders, all get together. On- I mean, it's it's technically, yeah, it's all the bikers technically, but I mean, it's really only for Harley riders. Right. So if you show up like riding an Indian, like they kind of look down on you. Used to. Used to. What do you mean used to? That's the, that's the. Bikers don't change. Oh, oh, wait. You you haven't heard? Heard what? What are you babbling about? Harley Davidson has gone more woke than Budweiser. The Harley Davidson tent at Sturgis this year has been fucking empty for three days. Most of the Harley riders have ever covered up the Harley Davidson logo or ripped it off even pan heads using paint scrapers. Harley owners scraping off a vintage fucking pan head. Damn. With razors. Because the this dude wow. has done this expose. Damn, they got to the, the bikers, fucking... man. Wow. Because Harley Davidson wow. hired this woke German Nazi, um, Zeich Reich. I figured uh, they'd be like the first ones rounded up. I didn't think they would actually try to target them with psyops. But damn. So am I am I facting you harder right now? Yeah. Did I totally come out of left field with the yeah, Harley? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think they'd try to to psychologically work on those people. Well, the reason why I led with the Greenwald and my buddy Robbie's expose there on Sturgis, or, or I mean on the the woke German fucking CEO of uh, Harley Davidson, you know, paying for DEI and LGBT training for all the employees of Harley Davidson. Totally politicizing everything. Uh, they destroyed Budweiser. Now it's time to destroy bikes. No more bikes. No more beer. Um, anyways, um, and then of course, Glenn Greenwald has audio, video, text, email, uh, cell phone, DM, all this stuff from uh, the censorship judge in Brazil, um, Alejandro de Moraes, uh, as well his, as his inner circle where they're talking about the fact that they're trying to go after people for free speech, but the business didn't make any, they didn't violate any law. And he's like, we'll just make something up. And this is what you need to investigate them for. But then you'll bring the investigation to my court and I'll act like, okay, I'll adjudicate this case if you're going to prosecute it. Because it turns out the judge in a case is not supposed to be the lead investigator and the prosecutor and the jury. And the judge all rolled in one. That well, that's actually not. What are they supposed to, to do? Uh, and so Greenwald, starting well today, so yesterday or Tuesday was the first day. Uh, yesterday was the second day. So today would be the third day where he's now doing like an intercept style release of these files, um, where he's writing for the main paper in Sao Paulo. Um, Folha Lacio or Falacio. I don't know, it's Portuguese. It's something like that. Folha de Moha. Right. I don't remember the name of the newspaper. It's Might like even it's be the German. largest paper in Brazil. Um, but anyways, it's, it's the equivalent oh, of writing I'm sorry, for the, that's Argentina. I'm sorry. It's the equivalent of writing for the New York Times. And it's just an absolute exploding scandal. And of course, uh, Moraes was so desperate that he was at the Supreme Court yesterday telling them that you guys have got to get Glenn Greenwald and you've got to go and and shut down this newspaper and you've got to go bust all the news channels on TV that are covering this story about me and it's threatening our democracy. And one of the guys on the court said something to the effect of, have you no decency, sir? So it kind of feels like we're it's similar to the moment that McCarthyism and, and the Red Scare ended 
in the United States in the 50s when, you know, Joe McCarthy is accusing army generals of being um, traitors and infiltrators. And one mm. of the fellow senators said, uh, Senator McCarthy, a fair amount of that have happened. you no decency, sir? Have yeah. you like literally, bro, you crossed the bridge, you jumped the shark, you've gone too far. Now everybody's laughing at you. And, and that's how the first Red Scare McCarthyism ended. Of course, now we're in a second phase of McCarthyism, and that's why it's okay to cheer we on are. U.S. and NATO forces occupying Russian territory right now to just really try to piss yeah, off but the even more. first wasn't like McCarthyism wasn't about the Russians. It was about the Soviets who were communist. Right. Didn't have Same anything time. to do with anyone's uh, ethnicity or, or, you know, where they necessarily were born. It was a battle of ideologies. And it's not exactly the same because this time the new McCarthyism, the new um, Russia gate, Russia, Russia, Russia hoaxes is, is actually being led by the American communists. Oh, all right. Well, then that makes sense. Because <laughs> they know what's best for the greater good. It's all about the greater good, you see. Yeah. Um, Heil Kamila. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, there, there's a whole laundry list on the Harley Davidson stuff. And really? we could probably just do an entire show just on that right now. But yeah. we're just jam packed with shit. And to just, oh uh, my I'm God. I'm not that interested, quite everywhere. honestly. I think it's kind uh, of funny. And I've got to get back to this conversation I was having with my buddy. Uh, uh, should I say his name? Dead fella? Uh, no, not dead fella. Um, my buddy working in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Because when it comes to discussing things in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, right? Um, it's a different country, and they still do public executions with a fucking sword. So, um, wow. But anyways, so uh, imagine, if you will, you're like at the Saudi Arabian Home Depot at 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And all these brown... It's only like, what, 90 degrees then, probably? Right. Yeah, it, it's the cooler part of the hot day. Right. And, uh, you know, you've got all these four foot eight brown and black-looking workers ready to go to work. Except they're not speaking Spanish. They're speaking Bangla. They're from Bangladesh, right? And they work all over Jeddah, Mecca, Ariad. That's the capital. Damal, really? All over the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Bangladeshis are the Mexican workforce of Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia. They, as well as Pakistanis and, and other um, uh, uh, tribes from the Hindu or Bharat, or India, if you want to call it, um, you know, whether we're talking Punjabi, or um, Gujaratis, or Pradeshis, or Keralis, or wherever, you know, Mumbai's, um, and, uh, you know, I, I touched on that previously, like when they were building the uh, the soccer stadium for their big soccer thing in Dubai, you know, that, that was done with um, primarily Southeast Asian labor, many of whom are held there against their will because when they land at the Dubai airport, their passports are seized and now they can't leave the country. And basically slave, slave labor force. Um, so I do like Pakistanis and Afghanistanis uh, not, not want to go and do that work? Is that why they're coming from Southeast Asia? Like that doesn't make well, a whole lot of sense. Just looking that, at the geography of the region. Oh, you, you don't understand. Emirati Airlines, um, all these, they have recruiters. Like It's just like slave catchers. They, they go into Dhaka, they go into Islamabad, and um, they, they go deep up into Karachi. Um, that, that's in Pakistan. And Karachi, too. Um, and uh, oh, Holy shit, and that's Lahore. where Brunei is? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, Brunei is over by Indonesia. Yeah. Next to their failed new capital thing. But yeah. all across Southeast Asia, they basically Shanghai these people into saying, hey, you're going to make all this money. You can send all this money back to your family. 
So and then they, they get did there, the whole, and they did colonialism all throughout Southeast Asia, just like they did on the American continent. Right, because Saudi Arabia is actually an Anglo-American Potemkin storefront. Fucking East India Company, man. Yeah, it, I mean, like Aramco is not some great Middle Eastern company. It's, like, it's just gonna, a surviving remnant of Rockefeller. We're going to find a way to get in um, every Eastern. single hole you have at the same time. So, with that being said, uh, the CIA and the ISI, it's basically foster child, um, first got rid of the uh, infamous cricket player who used to do shows with Julian Assange, Imran Khan, and his ass got booted out of office. Uh, He got overthrown uh, as the head of the Pakistani government. Um, Good luck, CIA. Uh, And then they just did it again in Bangladesh getting rid of uh, 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 Sheikh Hasina, replacing her with uh, Yunus Muhammad, this uh, uh, crypto tech homie that's best buddies with Hillary Clinton. And so, oops, they've done it again, Brittany. Um, And so, you know, of course, the Anglo-American establishment is hand in glove with the Saudis and the Emiratis using India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Burma, and others, as it's basically Africa to go snatch slaves from, to build their, you know, uh, Burj Khalifas and, and, you know, create more artificial islands right off the coastline to build more fucking, it, it just... Right, same, uh, you know, same thing that they did in, in the Pacific Ocean. Going yeah. out to Japan and uh, down to the Philippines and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Those Filipinos. Bases. Uh, yeah. Fucking, and if there ain't one know, there, we'll just build one. Most of the uh, mariners that are involved in the global shipping trade, which is one of the worst slave jobs in the world to be part of the maritime fleet, most of them are Filipino. Makes sense. Uh, because, you know, when it comes to, you know, that they're, they're flagged in one country and then they're owned in another and then all the workers from the Philippines. And, uh, but, but so back to Saudi Arabia. So in the midst of the protests in Dhaka by the students. Right. Uh, and then the military Which, took uh, over. So the, the, this was a color revolution by the United States to get rid of the despot that was in there and put their despot in. Well, that's that what happen? we were discussing today. Yeah. And that uh, seems to be the story. My, my friend, I'm going to call him um, Oman. Yeah. Because uh, his real name is Omar, but I don't want to say that over the air. Right. We'll call um, so, him uh, Joe. We'll call him yeah. Joe. Yeah. Joe. So, anyways, uh, Joe Camel <laughs> down in Saudi is explaining to me that, you know, the students have been protesting this um, creation of a new caste system and favoritism and everything for about 12 years. And it took a long time uh, for the protest to come to fruition. And what the uh, tipping point was, was when uh, the female leader of the country, Sheikh Hasina, decided to uh, take a few decisions in, on behalf of the sovereignty of her country. And the... Uh, the um, violation was when the U.S. military asked to take one of the Bangladeshi islands on, on the Indian Ocean coastline uh, and give it to the United States to become a new Diego Garcia floating fucking aircraft carrier. Blammo. So they have a closer air That's range do. doing bombing runs on China well. and the Russian former Soviet republics. Or yeah, uh, where, and, wherever uh, else in the region said, we feel like. She said no, and within days she's on helicopter going to India. That bitch has got to go. (laughs) You think Vic Newland is going to stand for that? No. Vic Newland said, "Fuck the EU." Come on now, come on now. Know your audience, people. Given that situation, this is what's incredible. This is where Yona really going to back you harder. Um, as I pointed out, 
the largest group of foreign laborers in Saudi Arabia is Bangladesh. Right. Because Bangladesh is a very, very tiny country in terms of land size. Yeah, it's not and very Bangladesh, big. And Bangladesh has half the population of the entire fucking United States fit into an area so it's about like 165 million? Size, yeah, about 170 million. Okay. And they're fit within the size of basically Florida. 170 million people in Florida. No, thank most you. Of them, most of them living within 20 feet of sea level. No. no and, I the, do that. And, and the country is crossed by six major rivers that flood constantly. Wow. So they, you know, they're always looking for a drier place to work. Um, anyways, um, so with that being said, when Sheikh Hasina stepped down, government was taken over by the military. Yunus was put forward, and the military turned the government over to Yunus. That was seen as a major win for Bangladesh. And a great departure from the standard playbook of, oh, like what they did in uh, Egypt, for example. Oh, right. y'all going to go all Tahrir Square and get rid of the Hosni Mubarak? I see what you're doing. Fuck you. Here's more military rule with Bata al-Sisi. Suck a dick. And they thought that's what's going to happen in Bangladesh. Right. But the military actually turned it over to Yunus Muhammad. In response, literally hundreds upon hundreds, he estimated around 900 to 1,000 Bangladeshis all gathered together in public square in Riyadh to celebrate. No, no, no protest or anything. Just celebrate. Waving Bangladeshi flag. Happy and everything. Wow. He said that's the first time there's ever been any type of gathering in public in Saudi Arabia, because that's not allowed ever. You just get your head cut off for that. I mean it's one of those um modern um countries that Still kind of barbarian because, you know, they just, oh, instead of, oh, you go to jail, go straight to jail, it's right. uh, off with your head, off with your head, and then I will cut off the heads of right. all of your nearest kin. Well, they're, um, they are. Uh, while we're selling pistachio ice cream in yeah, Riyadh Square. They, they are people of action. Yeah. And the Saudi Arabian Action dance, first, uh, questions uh, afterwards. Their, their most famous cultural thing is their Saudi Arabian dance, their Wahhabi dance. Mm -hmm. Well, and their swords is, is dancing with the sword, and yeah. you're pretending to cut someone. In that's like some, uh, as dance. yeah, that's some some uh, Britney Spears type shit, man. That's some serious shit. Man's best friend, man's best friend. That's uh, dog. So that's dog star. That's in serious. Response, that's some serious shit. Nine hundred Bangladeshis waving flags and celebrating and everything. Of course, uh, Saudi Arabian police and military immediately dispatched, kettled them up, arrested about three hundred of them. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen to him because that happened yesterday. And the media and the newspapers and the radio and TV, they've been doing everything they can to erase any news about Bangladesh on Saudi media because their workforce is Bangladeshi. Right. And they don't want a bunch of Bangladeshis saying, yeah, they don't want oh my God, the country's out. free now. We want to go back home now. Right. Fuck this job. We're going back home. Right. Well, I mean, but there's no, there, there's like no there's, news. Yeah, but it's there's not no like news there's... from home. Apu, just stay at work. Nothing happening over there. Yeah, you just stay at but your it, job. Uh, that's that's kind of short sighted, uh, in my view, because it's not like just because you overthrew the previous government that overnight things are just going to miraculously be better and opportunity is just going to be everywhere that it wasn't before. That's not how it works. Right. Anybody that thinks that it does is, you know, probably has other mental illnesses as well. I'm just waiting for a new leader of Bangladesh, Yunus Muhammad, to sign a memorandum of understanding with the United States Department of because uh, when you wouldn't need to with DOD, just State Department. State Department's good enough. When she said no to let them turn that island into uh, a bombing airstrip, 
he going to say yes. That's why he got the job. And That's if right. he don't say yes, his ass gone to find somebody too. else that will That's say right. yes. That's how it works. Ask Rafael Correa. That's right. In Ecuador. Guess what? Man has got the fucking DEA and the fucking Air Force there. And no more Correa. He's still hiding in Belgium behind yeah. our good friend, the pie thrower. We will coo whoever we want. Shout out Elon Musk. Shout out. Shout out Elon Musk. That's it's right. time to pray again. Pray I, apparently it is that season. It is that season, Yona. Uh, I heard I heard through the grapevine that uh, might as well go ahead and get it on the record here. I was planning to do it uh, tomorrow night at the latest. Because, again, we're about to head into another weekend news cycle because it is still technically summer, even though some of the kids have gone back to school. We got one more weekend um, of slow well, news We're already cycle. halfway through August and November, you know. First oh, yeah, Tuesday yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's just... going to go quick, trust me. Uh, but apparently one of the primary targets for the next color revolution because uh, then we are in, in selection season during 2024. There's, what, like I don't know, half of the, the world is having elections this year, some ridiculous what? shit. Uh, Serbia. Serbia is up next on the block. Apparently they what? haven't been uh, doing shit the way we want them to do. So, uh, yeah, they've been targeted. You heard it here first, well, folks. Just remember well, that. They- Serbia is neighbors to uh, Montenegro or Montenegro, uh, however that is said. Because, um, you know, they're, they're all former Yugoslavian republics. And uh, who can forget the uh, Bosnian War when NATO literally carpet bombed the former Yugoslavian republics with depleted uranium radioactive uh, bombs? Um, but fortunately, they did keep track of where every one of those bombs was dropped. And they gave oh, that information. Isn't that convenient? Directly and now south they're spending, of Hungary. They're spending What's been going on in Hungary lately? Dollars. Oh, they really don't like that Hungarian president. They really don't like him. Because he still, you know, does business with the Russians openly rather than buying the Russian oil from India like you're supposed to. <laughs> So, the next shoe to drop, obviously, I'm sure you've heard the... Oh, oh wait, uh, before we get to the next shoe, uh, hold, that, hold that thought. Uh, Biscotti in the Odyssey live stream chat, he jumped in. He asked the question. You know the question. Right. Um, right now, I'm higher than Kamala's cackle as the... Uh, 47th president of the United States being yeah. appointed into office I am by higher. Pelosi and Schumer. There you go. And uh, higher than say, Kamala's cackle. I am shout uh, out K Hive. I'm higher than the current alert level at the Department of Homeland Security. Ooh. Yeah. So that's going to put you up to burnt sienna, almost orange. Yep. In that territory. Correct. Yeah. Check, check yeah. your Crayola box with the 64 colors if, if you're not sure what the burnt sienna hue is. There you go. So, uh, Chucky the Shoe, and moreover, uh, Nancy Pelushi can a, has another tar bender. Um, uh, they've been boasting at Spinal Tap Volume 11 yeah. for over a week now that. They pretty much, she is my favorite uh, drunken grandma, by the way. Uh, I love it when she tears and rips papers from the podium, too. Very dramatic. Um, and that they orchestrated Biden dropping out of the re-election race. No, they didn't. And handing it over I heard, to I heard Nancy Mala. say herself, I heard the words come out of her mouth, that she didn't know. She didn't call anybody. She didn't do anything. None of that. But then she also said that that, she also said that letter from Joe didn't sound like Joe and pretty much admitted that Joe didn't write it. That's right. But she didn't do it. She didn't write that letter. She didn't do anything. She didn't make a phone call. Nothing. She told her inner circle whispering in their ear what to do and they did it. 
She and they just keep do, bragging about it. No, man, and it got to the point that, See, here's the thing. Everybody always misses the obvious thing. She didn't have to do anything because this had been decided fucking right. long ago. She had no fucking part in this. She's just as old and just as demented as Biden. Correct. Only drunker. Correct. And so, she will be taken out in the exact same manner when it becomes appropriate. Yep. Mark my they'll, words. They'll do her just like Die Five with her iPod. That's out. right. Sooner or later, Hammer Time is going to come for her. Uh huh. She's not MC Hammer. You can't touch this. Um, now, when it comes to Kamala Harris, it now seems completely inevitable that she's going to repeat her political history and be elevated and appointed higher up into office by appointment in well, order to maybe. run to keep the seat as an incumbent. We'll find out. I have a feeling we'll find out next week. Over and over and over and over and over and over again, whether we're talking AG, Senator. So, um, Again, I'm making the prediction that I've made several times now. It's going to be Guy Liner Vance versus President Harris this November. Wait for it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, I, mean I hope I'm both wrong. still alive, so the, the possibility exists. And there's still time because it's not November yet. I did hear a theory today, though. I think it might have been from uh, Adam Curry on the No Agenda show with Adam Curry and John C. Dvorak, um, oh, yeah. that uh, Vance is, is not actually wearing eyeliner. He's not wearing makeup. There, there is a percentage of the population that are apparently afflicted with a condition where they have like multiple sets of eyebrows. Um, or I mean, uh, eyelashes, eyelashes. So oh. it gives the appearance of like eyeliner, right? Because it's, it's darker. It's more concentrated. There's more little, because of their hairs, there's more little hairs there. So it looks like he's wearing makeup. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to defend the dude here. I'm just saying this is a thing that exists in the world in reality that we all walk around in. So instead of having just regular eyelashes. Right. He has he has eye right. bushes. Like, he like might have been born a faggot, is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. He's got he's, he's got. In addition in to hole. being a, a hillbilly redneck, redneck is the word he doesn't like. In addition to being born a redneck, he was also born faggot. But to be fair, if he's a hillbilly redneck in Ohio, the appropriate term is a. I'm bus surprised he lived this long. Quite honestly, yeah. Because yeah. uh, you know, credit to the, his survival skills. Here in the tri-state, I have gone over this before. Um, if you have three Appalachians in the room in Huntington, West Virginia, one's from Kentucky, one's from West Virginia, one's from Ohio, they all do banjo and butt stuff together, um, but they're not called the same thing. The Kentucky Appalachian is a hillbilly. The West Virginian Appalachian is a hill jack. And the Ohio Appalachian is a buck of Billy. Now apply loop. Oh my, where is that car crash button? I'm sorry, that uh, one was, that was my fault. Stop tailgating me, you piece of tea bag. Steve was, I thought Steve gave you that. That's close that's enough. That is close enough. Or we could use this as the car crash button. I, you can't hear it, but they can. I will eat your ass. That works. Bl Blammo. Yeah. Um, on a side note, uh, I, although I had to postpone my Monday peasants podcast because I was, um, studying the homeless population in Columbus. Oh yeah. Um, uh, you hanging out, visiting friends. Um, uh, well, I, I was just looking through the window of my locked doors as I was speeding through the city blocks, um, running red lights, uh, cause, uh, they carjacked there. Um, oh. in, I'll in, be going in, back to Columbus. Uh, in Columbus, you say? 
Yeah, it's kind of yeah. a dangerous place. Go I mean, to... ask Dimebag Daryl. I mean, Pantera went to play in Columbus. Actually, and a you fan can't, walked on you stage can't ask and actually Dimebag Daryl anymore. Dimebag yeah, Darryl. you, can't, you yeah. can't ask him that. He was killed Not anymore. I actually went to Dimebag's Rock the other day. You know, at the really? Phil's band. And that's oh, you all should have taken a picture, club. man. Put it on the Telegram channel. That would have been slamming. Well, I probably will be back up there. I'll take a picture next time. I'll you should definitely do that. I, I think people would like to see that. I mean, Folks, granted, let, about- let the Yona know if you would like to see a picture of Dimebag Daryl Stone. Yeah, it, it's all that's left. It's a memorial that people made for him there at the pool into the parking lot of the old club they tore down. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. I was on a door dash and... That's the same night that I took a picture Holy of the Hitler shit, sign. Holy shit, dude. We're five days from the 20th anniversary. Or no, I'm sorry. We're, we're months from the 20th anniversary. I'm sorry. He was born oh. on August 20th. He died December 8th, 2004. Right. But August 20th, five days is, is to his birthday. That would have been his birthday, yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, dying back, Daryl. Yeah. Nothing like those enharmonics on that guitar. I, I, I've never heard anyone else play guitar like Ever. A one of a kind, really. Um, but uh, so, you know, uh, as I was up there working around Columbus and uh, looking at all the homeless people and everything, uh, you know, it occurred to me that the sheer numbers of homeless, that's just absolutely exploded i mean literally panhandlers on every single corner panhandlers all over ashland panhandlers all over huntington uh so and then of course is working every time i stop to get gas at the gas station i'm speaking nothing but fucking spanish because all the workers in the work trucks <laughs> they're all fucking hondurans or nicaraguans Costa Ricans or El Salvadorans or Guatemalans, not Mexican, further south. Right. Further south. They're right. coming from further afield. Well, um, yeah, because for the most part, depending on where you are in Mexico right now, I mean, granted, it's uh, different in different regions in the country, but there's not a whole lot of reasons to leave Mexico at the moment, depending well, on yeah. what you got going on. You know. they, they they got a Jew woman running the place now too. It's great. Well, well they do, they do, off. they do, but that's all just kind of for show. That's just for show, for the most part. Outside I mean, of Mexico City, eh, federales really ain't got much power. What? When did she take office? Did Namlo already turn it over to her? Uh, she already won her election. When, when's the transfer of power? I've, I don't I know. I'm not sure. That. I'm not sure. I'll ask her boy next time I talk to him. He'll know. It's his country. Right. I don't get to claim it anymore, damn it. Much rather still call myself a Mexican. Uh, I'm just going to go off camera here just for a second because I've been going through these Hot flash, cold flashes. No, oh, I wow. got to change shirts. Well, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Uh, you know. let's see here. But you were on a roll, so I can understand. I I tend to get worked up when I when I get into something myself, and I lose myself in the subject and whatever the hell I'm saying about it. Uh, it does happen. It's known phenomenon, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, it's been recorded uh, here on Liberty Radio previously. It's there in the back catalog. You can uh, you can go and find it. I wonder if that means I'm going to have to let him back in. I don't think so. No, because he's still connected. I see him there. There we go. Bam! The magic shirt. of internet radio, ladies and gentlemen. The you just don't know. On the radio you just tell. don't the know. Like, we haven't even tapped 10% of the potential of what we can achieve, folks. Just to imagine. Manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. That is where you send the funding. 
We can rock this shit intergalactic. I'm telling you. Internationally known in every area code and time zone. That's right. That's your Grand Theft dude, World Liberty Radio. Dude, China, China was all over the website last week. I was like, I don't know what we did, but they were fucking, they were all about it. Oh, I was talking about um, Xi Jinping Pooh Bear. He really doesn't like the comparisons. To did you do that? I don't remember that. Yeah, I keep doing it. I fuck, I just did it again. Yeah. Oops. So, this was funny. I thought this was hilarious, as a matter of fact. Whoever, whoever so, knew that Winnie the Pooh had a CC penis? Anyway. Well, uh, I mean, it's 2024. So, all things are possible. Everything is permitted. We're living in a new age. It's the future time. Even... So you you heard about uh, what what happened in Iran this week, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But, where, where they where they killed Hania, the Hamas leader? No, they did that. They, what what they killed the Hamas leader? The 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 lead diplomat for Hamas traveled to um, Tehran, Iran. On oh, so like effort. the guy that would probably be responsible for negotiating peace and stuff. Right, like that. right. They took the, his the ass lead, out. Well, of course, we're going to war. Peace of course. negotiator. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they assassinated him in. Get Iran. his ass off the playing board immediately. Uh, we got also, shit to do. They also assassinated uh, some Hamas negotiators that were in uh, Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, that's that great. That's a Lebanon. That's not a neighborhood uh, because of their involvement with the um, Iranian uh, backed paramilitaries. Yeah. Um, that's not what I'm talking about, though. They're known as the Quds forces. Uh, and so, of course, you've heard this constant rhetoric that Iran needs to practice patience and diplomacy and, and not lash out or respond to Israel's violation of their territory and sovereignty. Yeah. Well, while all that was going on, Iran was allegedly hit with a cyber attack. Their central bank was. Yes. Which I was always under the impression that Iran didn't have a central bank. That was one of the reasons that we didn't oh, like Oh, they them. very much do. Anyway, uh, it shut down all the ATMs in the country so that folks could not go and pull out physical currency from any machine anywhere in the country. I'm going to mark that down as a win for Israel. Could possibly be. But, but wait, Yona, there's more. Because on top of the ATM machines being shut down, apparently somebody went and physically posted signs on each of the malfunctioning ATM machines saying, you're not going to be able to pull out money because we shut your machines down. Ha, ha, ha. That, that, that sounds more like what an American would do. Yeah. Now, granted, that was not the exact message that was on the sign, but it was something to that effect. And I forget if anybody took responsibility for it. I was like, wow, that's, you gotta have, like, you gotta have coordination, you gotta have funding, you, get, you actually gotta have people to go out, foot soldiers to go out and actually do the physical work of putting the signs on the ATM machines. Like, that's, that's some high-level trolling right there. How Hats much off. More, how much more does the United States military and NATO allied forces have to do to antagonize and instigate World War III? I mean, between um, invading part of the territory of the actual yeah, Russian I, Apparently, we haven't done enough to, already. We have uh, not done enough already, Yona. Uh, assassinating. There's more work to do. You know, assassinating diplomats on peace missions, whether it's, you know, Qasem Soleimani coming to uh, Baghdad airport and being killed or assassinating uh, diplomat Hania in uh, Tehran. You know, I mean, it's uh, par for the course, same playbook. Um, but uh, what what is quite interesting to me is the breakdown and the uh, global shipping trade. Uh, it's, it's, you know, because when these container ships uh, move things, you know, primarily from Shanghai, who's kidding who, um, to the United States, um, but, you know, you've got the 
uh, Den Hog and Hapag Lloyd and so many other shippers, you know, Rotterdam up in uh, the Netherlands, uh, Holland, you know, they, they're one of the main shipping ports for all of the European Union. Uh, and uh, of course, with the uh, Houthis in Yemen um, attacking the military resupplies being sent down the Red Sea by uh, British and American forces to resupply the Israelis and Emiratis that are illegally occupying Yemen's island of Socotra, the one with all the weird-looking trees at the mouth of the uh, Red Sea. Or uh, if we go back to Yonah's uh, vaginal description of the Red Sea, Socotra would basically be kind of like a hanging scat turd that's hanging out of the butthole. Um, and that would be the island of Socotra with the blood trees. Um, we'll call it Hemorrhoid Island. That would be better. It's Hemorrhoid Island. It's a large, swollen um, rectal uh, capillary. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's, it's been occupied by... Uh, I, I just want to apologize to Socotra for saying that. It's a really beautiful island. Hate to compare it to a hemorrhoid. We're, we're just trying to be descriptive ge geographically. It's well, not you're all American. To keep story. the analogy accurate. Yeah, yeah I don't think anybody's going to fault you for that. And you know, uh, not everyone is is geographically oriented, uh, particularly in the United States. And so, you know, compare it to anatomy, then you can kind of figure. Well, just imagine where Asia and Africa meet is basically a land vagina. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I've not heard much about the fact that, you know, one of the main reasons why the Houthis, uh, based uh, primarily out of the city of uh, Hodeidah, why they've been attacking uh, these military resupplies. Now, of course, uh, in, you know, they've been doing these actions, uh, the, the Houthis, uh, uh, on Sarlaw, well, yeah, uh, don't, to, don't they to support the us? Palestinians. Right. Um, well, to, to support that's the why, Palestinians like they're, and to protest the American, the devil. British, and Israeli genocide of fellow Arabs in Palestine. But what I've not heard discussed is the fact that the Yemenis have been targeting military resupplies being sent down the Red Sea to Socotra to resupply Israeli and Emirati soldiers occupying Socotra, an island that belongs to Yemen. So they have a uh, national fucking interest to attack foreign ships that are supplying ammunition and food to foreign troops that are occupying part of their fucking land. So yeah. it's not just Palestine. All right, Paul Harvey, page three. Yeah, it's uh, called <clears throat> terrorism. Or if you're on the other side, it's called freedom fighting. Freedom fighter. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, Star Wars. Go watch Star Wars. That's a good example. Because in, in uh, Star Wars, you see it from the perspective of the terrorists. I don't know. I don't know if, ever, if everybody understood that's what George Lucas was doing or not. But when, when you watch Star Wars, you're watching from the perspective of the 19 hijackers uh, on 9-11. Right. So, just be aware only of they, that. Only they fly planes slightly better. Am I right, air traffic control? I mean, my no. God, how many times is Harrison Ford going to land Luke on a taxiway? I mean, was pretty way? good on that trench run. You know. Uh, he got so. dead on bullseye the first time. Like, you don't always get that. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, well, there is more stuff coming out about Tim Walls being um, dishonest, but um, shocker, kind of boring to me. Like, what does he do again? About, oh, that's right, he's a politician. And are you saying that a politician lied once, Yona? You know, talking about being deployed with his troops and he made sure to retire before he would be deployed because he knew deployment was coming. Uh, bok, 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 chicken, chicken. But anyway. So he's, uh, he's an eager beaver, is what you're saying. Yeah, 
Yeah. He was like, you know, I don't really feel like going to war and fighting. I'd rather go suck a horse dick instead. So um, there you go. And apparently he did exactly that. Yeah. yeah. And he's still alive. So you are probably mm-hmm. made the right choice. Your governor of Minnesota. Because I, I can't imagine. A, They've a come horse such a long way from Jesse the body. I mean, uh, a horse cocksucker probably ain't going to last long in combat. He should probably just stick to sucking horse dick. And imagine. You think think, uh, Walls will uh, hang out with Gavin Newsom at the convention? You think they'll be, like, at the same table? I know who wants. Do you think Newsom's going to, like, stay as fucking far away from that place as he possibly can, understanding that it's political suicide to be there? Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you know what a shit show Chicago is going to be? Do you know what a shit show Chicago already is? Oh, my God. Is it already <laughs> going on? No, it's next week. Oh, my God. Yeah, it starts on the, what, 19th, I think. So that's Monday. And that's when Kamala is going to be come president. That's right. That's when she gets elevated to uh, God Emperor. Um, Hopeful it, it, or whatever. It's Runner up. Biden, I don't know. Is it is it Parkinson's disease that Biden has now? What are they saying? It uh, is now? Pudding brain. Biden's got pudding brain. Pudding brain. Yeah. It's not dementia though. At least it's not dementia. He was never demented. I mean, he's it, always he's always been kind of kinky. From uh, I heard somebody read that diary. And uh, that was that was kind of what they said. He was into some weird shit. Yeah, who who knew that Delaware was part of Appalachia? But the Bidens, the Biden family, you know, putting off major meth. Scranton. He's from Scranton. Scranton Joe. That's right. Scranton Joe. That's where you get the Appalachia from. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it all in the family. That's right. Keep it in the family. I'll, in these I'll let you marry somebody else just as soon as I teach you everything you need to know. That's right. Got to break like, you like in that, first. Like that song, One More Time by David Allen Coe. I don't recommend David Allen Coe music unless you really enjoy the racism. And if you do, by all means, fuck it in the bud, fuck it in the bud, fuck it in the bud. I'd like to fuck the shit out of you. Oh, there's so many great songs. Yeah. Lots of racism, lots of misogyny, all kinds of hate speech. Yeah. Good stuff. Good David stuff. Allen Coe was reliable Coe. in uh, in that department. Absolutely. He delivers. Yes. He delivers. I'm telling you, Every David Allen Coe time. delivers like UPS, which Every brings me to my time. next thing. That's right. Um, thanks to my homies in Saudi Arabia and Bangladesh and, uh, oh, uh, and my friend uh, in the United Kingdom in Manchester, uh, Kingsley Dennis. Yeah. They pulled money together and they've sent me three huge boxes of electronic equipment. Holy crap. What'd you get? Sound card, mixing table, monitor speakers, wires. Blam. Kind of um, wow. And uh, because, I wish I uh, had things like that. Damn. And so, because uh, <clears throat> we're working on this new album. Um, Dr. Dennis and Deadfell and I. And and they were like, Yeah, we gotta get you this shit so that you can do this other stuff. And because it, it's it's so that I can do more mastering of the tracks. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it used to be that I just performed different parts and then Deadfella would do all the mastering. But uh Lord, I'm gonna cry. I, like Deadfella said that uh he thinks my mastering is is at his level? We'll see. Um, I now don't know. You, I don't now that so. you have some good tech to work with, we'll see. I'll be the judge. I don't, of that. I don't think so. I, I think he's just flattering. Me. But no, I mean, I'll I, be the judge of that because I'm I'm an impartial third party. Uh, I, I with sent a, a him a well developed ear. Well, it was in response to when I sent him my new album, even album though I'm going deaf. Uh, which I, I do have to point out to our mutual friend Shelley. Um, Album 33, Pie Facer, Mon Couture. I made it for a Canadian audience, so it's in English and French. 
Um, and uh, album 33, when I made the music video for it, uh, the file size was 6.66 uh, gigabytes for album 33. Of course uh, it was. Of course it was. Yeah. Of you course. didn't plan that or anything. It just happened. No. That's, no it, that's what Bob Ross would call a happy accident. That's right. Yeah. It's just like happy little treats. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of happy accidents, Yona. <laughs> We, we did have a sad moment this week. I'm sure you, you had to take a moment of silence one day for uh, Susan Wojcicki. Left yeah. us far too early at the, at the too young age of 56 from... Turbo cancer. Turbo cancer. That's right. Very, it's very... It's the style of the time, right? Turbo. Every Like all the kids want the turbo cancer these days. I, I, mean, don't, I don't get it. Was it. I don't like understand a, these trends. This was not a long public bout with cancer like with Shannon Doherty. Uh, no. This was like no, 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 very no, no, sudden. No. All, no, you know, we all was, knew uh, Shannon was dealing with it. She was swinging the band hammer uh, freely yeah. for, for many, many years there on, uh, on YouTube when we knew that Shannon was, uh, was battling cancer. And uh, right. Susan was just out there with the band hammer just having... Uh, a blast living her best life, I believe is, uh, is how they describe it. Um, and hey, then, yo. and then her son, like, what was it four months ago, three months ago, something like that offs himself just yeah. like yeah, out yeah. of the blue. He's yeah. like doing a bunch of drugs and like, I don't know, getting into like Satanism or some shit. I'm not quite sure. I don't have all the details, uh, but then he takes himself out. You know, well, I mean, it, Satan demands sacrifice. He doesn't ask. It's a demand you must meet. And that's yeah. why there are sacrificial altars all well, over Well, and America I mean, and let's, not, let's, let's not and get Europe. overly specific here because uh, Moloch also demands blood to uh, uh, suit the appetite of his mechanical heart. So, that's you know, right. it's, it's not just Satan getting all the action out there. It's, it's a competition. It's a loaded marketplace. And Drizzle, don't ever sleep on Cthulhu. That's right. Cthulhu is that dark horse in the race. He's Probably always out there win lurking. Place show. That's right. People, people That's sleep right. on Cthulhu, and then every time when it comes to the end of the race, That's when he one of those three horses up. that win place or yep. show, Cthulhu, Cthulhu always wins places or shows. Yep. So, you know, if you're at the horse track, always, always save a little bit of bet money for Cthulhu. Anyway. Yeah. Um, We've made it through the first hour. We're on to the second hour. Now I guess Oh, holy I shit. Look at that. Pocket. Wow. All right. Just jam I didn't know you had something stashed back there for the second hour. That's awesome. Uh, so well, um, I, have, I have been buying a lot of legal weeds all across Ohio, and uh, I have to send a special fuck you to the medical marijuana I don't, I don't think we have a jingle for that yet. In Jackson. Ohio and Jackson County. But of course, Jackson, Ohio, and Jackson County are named after Andrew Jackson, who ordered the Cherokee and many other tribes uh, to be evicted west of the Mississippi. Mr. Trailer Tears. So the Jackson Dispensary. I'm not even going to name them by name. They're over on AC Drive. Uh, and I thought, you know, I would go over there and check them out. And, uh, yeah, they were doing rec sales. And I got in there. And unlike other legal weed states where they show on their price list, well, this is what the weed actually cost. And this is what the total cost is walking out the door after we add, you know, the 5 or 10 or 12% state excise tax on marijuana. Or like in the case of Ohio, the highest tax of any 17%. legal state in the union, 17%. Damn, uh, nailed it. Yeah, you did. That's right. Uh, I know parasites. Been studying so, them a long time. This is a medical dispensary that has always catered to cancer patients in Jackson. Right. And they're the cheapest weed that they had, because they don't, they're still, because the dispensaries are still, the only ones that are open right now still, because it's just basically a week of sales so far, 
little over a week, are the medical dispensaries that were at the first list that were allowed to begin recreational sales. But medical marijuana dispensaries don't sell eighths and quarters. They sell tenths. Oh, Jesus. So they go by the gram. Right, and so you can get 2.83 grams to the tenth. Or you can get a whole ounce at 28.3 grams. Or you can get a half the ounce at 14 and point whatever. So, right. point being, the, 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 the minimum eight, amount... Not eighths and quarters? Buy, not yet, because that's how recreational weed is sold. And they're making the transition from only having medical dispensaries. All right, dispensaries I guess if we're like splitting hairs, whatever. Recreational, and so... Because, again, they were told they wouldn't be able to do... I mean, I can go through a quarter in a day or I can go through a quarter in a week. It just depends on what I'm doing. I've been doing a lot of research buying marijuana legally all across Ohio. I've now been to five different dispensaries. And uh, I can tell you, hands down, I cannot recommend enough Southern Ohio Botanicals on U.S. Route 23 in Pike County, Ohio. Just north of the city of Waverly, Ohio. They have the best, strongest weed for the cheapest fucking price in Ohio. I know. It's running about eight, nine dollars as high as about fifteen, twenty dollars a gram. But you can get weed there for about ten, twelve dollars a gram. That'll knock your dick in the dirt. The Jackson dispensary that I began this bitch session about, the cheapest weed they had was $28 a gram. They were selling some of their weed for as much as $40 a gram after you add the tax. And up until a week ago, they were only selling at these prices to cancer patients. So again, fuck you, Jackson dispensary. That's just wrong. Why would you charge a dying cancer patient forty dollars a fucking gram for weed? Fuck you, assholes! I'll do it again. Never too. seen weed that Fuck expensive you. in my life. And when she showed me the list, and I looked at the prices, I said, "Oh my God, your prices are three to four times higher than any other dispensary I've ever been into in the state of Ohio, much less the dispensaries in every other country. I mean, every other state that I've been in." Um, She's like, well, which one do you want? I said, I'm walking out right now. Bye. She's like, well, you were our first customer today. Because as I walked out the door, I found out, oh, they were only doing recreational sales from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, the days that they were open. And I just happened to pull up at 4.45 uh... and went in there. And I was like, where is everybody? They're like, oh, are you here for medical? No, I'm here for recreational. Oh, you got to wait 10 minutes. And then all these other people piled up behind me. So by the time I went back there, there's like a line of 20 people Jesus. waiting to go back there to buy weed. And I'm the first one. And she shows me the price list. She's like all excited and telling me this one here is really the best one. And I'm and of course, first number I look at is the fucking price. Right. And I'm like, that's 2.83 grams for $93, not including tax. What? You people are crazy. You Did you tell her to go crazy. fuck herself? I just said I'm walking straight the fuck out the door right now. So I did use the F word, but it was not personally directed at the lady that doesn't set the price. Was she I'm cute? Not total out though. Uh, no. Oh, I would have been not yeah. to my taste. Not to my taste. I I don't like short, stubby, crew cut, green hair. Well, it is Ohio. Bone I guess you can't nose. expect too much, right? Flyover I state. Think it, actually, I'm not sure if it was a. Did I say it was a female? I'm not sure. Oh, it was. It was one of them's. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. It's and right. it's okay to and, to be unsure. Wait, it, it gets worse. It's all I right, do remember, Yona, This is a safe. I space. do remember the name. The name. Uh, the, the 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 worker's name was Pat. Of course it was. And, and I don't know if it's Patrick or Patricia. It's just like the show from Saturday Night Live, man. I don't know. But 
$30, $40 per gram of weed? No, thank you. Still go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. fuck yourself. I'm straight out this door. And while you're doing that, take your weed and stick it straight up your ass. Yeah. Just multitask. Learn how to fucking multitask, you fucking simian. So then I went back to Southern Ohio Botanical. And I got some of this stuff from Firebird Scientific Salty Watermelon Flower. And this is uh uh this is some cancer weeds. Uh, medical grade. Gives you cancer? It's, uh, no, it, it's it cures cancer. A, uh he said this is the most popular brand amongst uh, people suffering cancer. Strain. Uh, the, the most potent strain for strain. people with the yeah. most cancer. They're pain. not brands. Right. Uh, a strain. Uh, total THC, 29.85%. That's decent. And it, it comes in a, a glass jar with a wooden lid. And oh, that's classy. I like that. And, of course, it's got the little... Uh, desiccant um, wafer in there to maintain proper humidity. Um, oh my God. Bro. Yeah, I can't smell it's it. Just, the, the sparkles, man. It's like a fucking disco ball. It's, just it's like the sound, the sound and the picture go through the internet, Yona, but the smell does not. But not, not. the smell. No. Yeah, we're still working on the uh, smell. still working on that. I'm told uh, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, that should be ready. I can't wait so, till we can uh, send check back the... then. <laughs> Remember, I, I I talked about this long ago about my proposed technology for sending um smexed messages, text messages <laughs> that you can smell, where you can literally fart into your phone, click send. The receiver accepts the message. Is this because the, you want the internet to act exactly or like the real world? Where and that you way, when you coming. right, and then you accept the message, and then the the cell phone has an orifice where it combines the different smell uh, molecules, so that you get to actually smell the same smell. There's a way to make this happen. We're living in the future time, man. Don't answer that I, message, though. I don't. I don't think anybody's gonna like there's no venture capital money uh coming for this type of project i don't see it like it doesn't involve a dildo like there's not rainbows all over it um i gotta get elizabeth holmes on this yeah she can help i heard she's free like she's not working anywhere at the moment as far as i know last i knew and she wears brown jumpsuit every day so i'm not going to be out dressed at last I hate when I get out dressed. Well, it's casual, you know, business casual. And so, uh, Yona, Yona, um, uh-huh. again, something else you, you might not know because there was uh, so much going on this week. The events were literally flying fast and furious. Um, your social security number got stolen, Yona. Oh, no. Did you know that? No. Yeah, your social like security number got number. stolen. My social security number got stolen. Uh, your kids, all your kids, if they have social security numbers, they all got stolen. Even people that don't have social security numbers, like the undocumented migrant children we were talking about, the, the uh, government's going to scan their faces to make better algorithms. Their yeah. social security right. numbers no. got stolen too. It was like two billion social security numbers got stolen. How do you steal social security numbers? Uh, how do you, you have? Into a, how, how do you have two billion social security numbers? There's not even that many Americans. There's never been that many Americans, ever. Well, this is definitely a real story. Where, where's that story coming from? I don't, I can't remember, but it was, it was, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's in the news cycle and then it disappears yeah. really quick and you can't find it again. But it was uh, national public data got hacked. 
And uh, if you ever, if you have like a, like a background check done, um, like they, they supply, they were basically a clearing house for, uh, if your social security number had been flagged by the government for oh. whatever reason, like they were the repository for all of that information. They got hacked. Allegedly. Oh, Allegedly. Hmm. Some of these hacks seem more like they kind of hit like a public private partnership, not really a hack. It's kind of like when there's a heist, but some of the uh, robbers, some of the thieves actually work at the at the establishment. And so it's kind of like a inside job type thing. Right. Let's find out. Like, like that uh, Martin Lawrence thing, you know, where he had to go back and get the jewels out of the building that turned into a police station. The hell are you talking about? God, it's been so long since I watched a movie at the movie theaters. Last one I watched in the movie theaters was Heath Ledger as Batman. That's All right, a long here time we go. Ago. <clears throat> According to for a while. Yeah, according to uh, the the highest authority in the land, Wikipedia, uh, National Public Data is a data broker company that performs employee background checks. Their primary service is collecting information from public data sources, including criminal records, addresses, and employment history, and offering that information for sale. Right. Again, according to Wikipedia, feel free to look that up on your own. And those are the assholes that fucked up my gig with Uber because when my Kentucky driver's license expired last year and I broke down and went ahead and got the Ohio driver's license, my Kentucky driving record was closed by the state of Kentucky because I no longer held a Kentucky driver's license. And so when Uber requested those assholes to do a background check on me, they gave to Uber my Kentucky driving record and my state of Texas driving record, the other state where I've had a driver's license. Because when I joined the Army, I turned in my Kentucky license for a Texas driver's license, which means... They gave me a fucking piece of paper and I had to wait. I don't know. It was like two months later, I finally got my fucking license in the mail to oh, replace damn. this piece of paper that fucking Texas DMV gave me. Well, this is your license until you actually get your license. Shit. I got to do that soon. Um, and so, so be I can prepared. have the privilege of driving. Yeah. Be prepared. When you turn in an old license from another state, to Texas, they just give you a piece of fucking paper. That's fine. So I don't you'll, care. You'll as long as it's valid. We'll, we only make licenses in Austin. We'll have to mail it to you. You All can't right. make licenses in Dallas? Nope. It's okay, the same way then. in Virginia. It's yeah, it's yeah. the way they've got the scam set up. You know, because it's it's I mean, one company that's making all of the licenses. Which again is, see, is just, fucking retarded. They just changed that in Kentucky, you see. Up until two years ago. Most counties in Kentucky, again, there's 120 counties in Kentucky. The only state with more counties is Texas. And in each county, you could go to the, you could go to the court, uh, the uh, circuit court clerk's office, and they issue driver's licenses. And in many counties with large populations like Fayette County, home to Lexington, Jefferson County, home to Louisville, um, you know, uh, Canton County, home to Covington, up by Cincinnati. Um, you know, they would have uh, other places, like, for example, where I got my license in Greenup County. I didn't have to go to the Greenup County Courthouse. They have a uh, second court clerk's office in Flatwoods. So I just went to Flatwoods to get it. And so most counties had at least one, if not two or three different places where you could get a driver's license. Up until about two years ago. Uh, and now the Kentucky Department of Transportation took it over. 
And now there's only 10 places. There's 10 DOT offices across the entire state of Kentucky where if you want to get a driver's license, you have to physically drive to one of those fucking offices to apply for it. And then you get a piece of paper and then you have to wait for your license in the mail. So, Your tax dollars <laughs> at work, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, it, 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 mm. it's because Kentucky had been dragging their feet on the real federal ID program. But everybody has been dragging their feet on real ID. And when they finally nobody joined fucking up, wants it. Right. They joined up a year and a half ago. And when they did that, they stripped all driver's licensing away from the courthouses and turned it over to the Kentucky Department of Transportation. Yeah. They figure if they, if they just drag it out long enough, it'll just happen. Like people will forget about it and they'll just be able to do it. And it's not going to fucking happen. Yeah, so uh, your but, tax dollars but, hard at waste. Hey, it, look, if you, want, if you want the government to control every aspect of your life, uh, here's my advice to you. Move to Australia. Australia is looking to institute digital ID by December 1st of this year. Oh Remember how we kept saying that Australia is the canary in the coal mine? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Told you. Man, we're... They have not been deterred in their plans at all. They are right on fucking schedule. Digital ID is coming right after your selection is over. What a great Happy New segue. Year. I, I did mention earlier that my Masonic album number 33, Pie Facer, dropped. And I made a music video for the continuous play of the album, which is a play length of about an hour and 40 minutes. And for the video content, I, I have the train driver view of the Savannah Lander Australian Railways train uh, that runs on broad gauge railroad track up in northern Queensland up north of Brisbane. Um, uh, so, uh, and uh, the, the train travels rather slowly. But I figure if you're listening to the Club Banger album, um, you're going to be on so many drugs that the train will actually be going quickly and not slowly. So. Or you might not even see the train at all. Right. Just depends on what you're on. The, the coolest thing about the video is like, it just kind of seems boring and uneventful and just looks like a desert plain and just scrub brush, almost like you're in West Texas or something. It's all flat. You can't even hardly see the railroad ties. You just see the rails. And all of a sudden, you'll see these things like kind of off in the distance and it seems like they're hopping and jumping. And then you see they're, they're crossing. There's a huge fucking group of these things crossing the tracks and then as you get closer you're like oh my god that that's like a a flock of hundreds of fucking wild kangaroo what in the fuck so it's it's pretty cool video it's, you know i mean for those that have never spent any time in australia it's an hour and 40 minutes of traveling through bum fuck egypt and australia and seeing the strange wildlife that they have there it, it is strange Kangaroos are weird. Well, yeah, they 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 they, they kick and punch at the same time while well, they sir, balance on their tail. Yeah, well, that's nothing, Where's man. Have you heard about the drop bears? Holy yeah. shit! Fuck all of that, son. I'm happy I live in the U.S. of A. And of course, we've been over the cassowaries before. The yeah, yeah, we've been over the cassowaries. Yeah. Fuck them too. Holy and there's shit! The emu. Fucking armies can't even defeat the emu. The Australian army lost to the emus. How, do, yeah, how does Australia is fucked, dude? Like yeah. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to tell the people down there. You know the worst drop bear. Uh, the worst drop bear in Australia is Canberra. Yeah. And you know Canberra is many in many ways like uh, Brasilia in Brazil. It, it's it's like a new capital that they stashed in the middle of fucking nowhere. 
so that you know they'll they'll be safe from any protests. Kind of like what Indonesia is trying to build with their new capital up on uh, Kalimantan Island, um, uh, which they share with Brunei or Brunei. And because uh, you know the currently the capital of Indonesia is, is Jakarta, but uh, over half of Jakarta has now sunk below sea level. Uh, Oops. And it, it's it's just a real problem because you know uh, in order to build up around Jakarta, I can see they, how and, that might make things difficult. Because a they've bit. reclaimed a little bit. They've re, uh, the reason why it's sunk below sea level is because it's reclaimed land where they build in swamp and stuff. You know. Oh, I assumed Dutch, it was climate change. When the Dutch went into Jakarta, how many cancer. Fucks, hundreds of years ago with the Hanseatic League, you know, Jakarta was kind of like the Venice of Indonesia with water and canals everywhere. And now it's just all land mass. And everywhere there was water and canals, all that land has sunk and settled and compacted down below sea level because. That's what happens when you don't properly reclaim land and you just build in swamps with just dirt from 200 years ago. And after 200 years of settling, it's now below sea level. That's to be expected, you know. But uh, the the plan, because, you know, uh, their new president, Joko, is, is uh, he's about to leave office. And this was his great project to move the Indonesian capital to the middle of the fucking jungle. Uh, and, and of course, it's going to be the first great well, smart city for the in Incas, Indonesia. And, you know, that way they can rule oh, wait a in a secure, gated community in the middle of the jungle and just absolutely terrorize the rest of Indonesia. And they'll, they'll be safe from any protest or attack or anything. That works for but, Dick Cheney. The problem is uh, they've spent all this money and it looks like it's going to be a total flop. No. Now they've got like what? half built. Are you telling me government junk. wasted money, Yona? I, mean, I don't know if I can be believe that. $36 billion to build and the first phase, $3.6 billion. Holy shit. That's like and twice they got what we just it. sent to Israel to blow up little Palestinian children. Yeah. Damn. That's some Drones serious money. Drones aren't cheap. Whew. All right. I've almost made it. All right. Yeah. Some We're almost weeks. there. Or if you need to take off early, that's cool. I can close no, out no, the no. last 30 minutes. No, no, no. I, I had to call off my show Monday. I've been sick for three days and three nights. I got my meds. I got everything lined up. And I was not going to disappoint the internet or the loyal following. I mean, people need to get fact harder because there's just too much bullshit out there. And the propaganda is just Dude. intensifying. The propaganda yeah. is just really intensifying well and we're really gonna get beaten over the head next week like it's gonna be dude folks i <clears throat> i don't know what what you've been experiencing in your social ghetto feeds but uh mine has been non-stop all camel toe all the time and she is uh she is here to save us from the the evil orange bad man uh she is a, a superhero of mythical perform per Portions that was prophesied long ago by uh, uh, old white men. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been getting. And I have a feeling that it's going to be like that next week, but like 10 times that. You know, I do want to go back to the conversation I was having earlier today with Saudi Arabia and Bangladesh on the phone there. Um, and I brought up the fact that there are so many Brahmin caste Indians in the United States mm -hmm. in high positions of power, none more notable at this point than Kamala Devi Gopalan Harris Emhoff. Man, that's a lot of names. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, my friend... Debbie? Uh, Devi, D-E-V-I, Kamala Devi. Devi, um, which oh, is, I uh, gotcha. All right, I thought you said uh, D-E-V-V-I-E. Right, that's what I uh, thought you said. 
Like we're talking Debbie does Dallas. Gotcha. Debbie does gotcha. Dallas is the triple X version. Right. Um, Kamala Devi is one of the uh, um, deities in Hindu uh, belief. And that's for whom she was named. The goddess Kamala Devi. The Isn't one that, that interesting? Soul. Yeah, and, and she kind of seems like one that would eat your soul. So um, she does it by sucking your dick, and then your soul comes right out of the pee hole. And, and then you're just a shrunken mortal of your former self. Ask Willie Brown. It's what happened to him. He was going to be immortal. Not anymore. So, uh, my my friend in Saudi Arabia, the one we're calling um, Joe Camel, uh, and Dead Fella started going through a laundry list of like, well, the guy at Google and then the head of the this and the other, and they're going through and naming all, head of Microsoft. all these people yep. like, that are Indian. Yep. I was like, Bro, because I was making the point. James was pointing that out three years ago. And I didn't even realize how pervasive it was. And they just kept going. They were yeah. going back and forth like, and then da-da-da-da-da, and then da-da-da. And they're like, hey, and don't forget a Jeep pie at fucking FCC with the yeah. big fucking coffee cup. And I'm like, oh, yeah. damn. These motherfuckers are everywhere, man. Yeah. Of course the Brahmin cast fits in hand yeah. in glove with the professional, marriage, professional managerial class. They're one and the same. Yeah. They're just a, a bourgeois from a different country. Correct. Bourgeois. Correct. The Correct. Correct. Bun- bunch of bougie homies. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, they're, they're, they're bull, boule by another stain is all it is. Yep. Right. It's just their different, job is to- different shade of pigment. Same fucking they're- assholes. And, and they manage the human cattle. Yep. And so, you know, it, it was just uh, really, really something. Um, <coughs> man, that's some good weed. <coughs> nice. But I got to say, um, you know, Pakistan is still pretty much being run by their military. Egypt is still being run by their military. Um it's astonishing to me that uh, Bangladesh is not being run by their military, uh, which is awesome because now that Yunus Muhammad has taken over uh, and the Bangladeshi military is not running the government, um, this should open the way for the U.S. military to run Bangladesh, as it should be. Yeah, but not directly. They're going to do it on the sly, right? Right. That's why they need the island. Correct. To build their bombing airstrip. Yeah. They'll rule from there. That's right. Same way they rule Cuba from Guantanamo Bay. That's Who's right. Who? That is exactly correct. I asked President Diaz Canal what the fuck he can do about Guantanamo Bay. Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. That, that, that was our first overseas military base established in 1890 after the yellow journalism surrounding the sinking of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor. Uh, and, uh, we're still there. Yep. And who 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 hasn't heard of Gitmo Bay's famous cock meat sandwiches? Better than a Cuban. Uh, I Camp just X-ray got that Gitmo joke. Bay. That's gross. Yeah. That's no. I don't just think, do like Harold and Kumar I bite think the dick that's and run to George Bush's house. I don't yeah. think that should be allowed. Stop tailgating me, you, you piece remember of that? Back. When uh, Harold and Kumar go to Guantanamo Bay. They were on the plane going to the Netherlands, going to Amsterdam to smoke weed. The fucking Kumar had smoke weed on the plane. The old lady thought he was a terrorist. So Harold and Kumar end up in Guantanamo Bay. The fucking American guard comes over and is like, you're going to suck my dick. And they're like, that's gay. Well, I'm not gay. You're gay for sucking my dick. Somebody bites the dick. They make their escape. Next thing you know, they're smoking weed with George W. Bush. I think that's the third movie reference I've I had. I thought he preferred Coke. Episode. That's what I always I, I do, too. But it was a movie, so it was uh, somewhat fictionalized. He's like, right, right, all right, right, guys, Dick they Cheney take is in the other room. liberties and all of that shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now that Dick Cheney's gone, uh, we can smoke. Uh, boys, uh, sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up, smoke my weeds. 
So uh, I don't think I've ever had any episode where I've had so many cinematic references, and I don't even watch movies anymore. That's well, it's uh, it's a new era, you know. We've got a uh, we got a new regime coming in, uh, so it's time to to clear out old things. That's fine. That's a service we can provide. I'm okay with that. But you know, Yona, uh, TikTok fucking hates us. Absolutely oh, no. fucking hates us. Like, I've, I've tried, people have actually been uh, posting comments on the TikTok videos that we post, right? Because apparently Liberty Radio posts wildly popular videos on TikTok. I don't, I don't, ex- yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, the people dig it. The people absolutely love Li- Liberty Radio on TikTok. Uh, TikTok fucking hates us, though. Absolutely oh, yeah. hates us. I try to reply to comments, and they fucking they just erase the shit. They're like, "This is this violates our community guidelines," and I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about? I'm just trying to talk to the people." Um, I had one of my videos deleted by TikTok where I was what, where the video was black because I had my cell phone resting against the grand piano. All I was doing was playing the piano and singing non vulgar words, right. no curse words, no sexual content, just Yona playing fucking piano and singing dumped for lewd and offensive content. What? And the entire video is a black Because the screen, screen was black? That's racist. And I thought the black square meant you're down with George Floyd. Right, man. right, exactly. Like, where's the outrage George over this? Where George is the Floyd outrage is the over this, ladies and gentlemen? For oppression Olympic competition. Don't sleep on George Floyd. He's fentanyl powered. Right, Tim Walls? That wasn't a counterfeit 20. And what? what's his name? The Shit, I can't remember that guy's name now. Who? Uh, George Droid's good buddy that he used to uh, be club security with. Chauvin. Derek, is it Derek Chauvin? Derek Chauvin. Yeah, because he was a chauvinist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Chauvinist, misogynist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yep. Everybody's fucking retarded now. It's great. It's great living in a cartoon, it. you know? It's I like, good God, neck- I can see the fucking punchline coming from a mile away, and y'all are sitting here laughing your heads off. The fuck is wrong wanna, with you people? I just want to give people a taste. Of what's coming up next week in Chicago. Uh-oh. I can find it. Oh, no. Texas. Did you do a remix with, uh, with Kamila? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, oh. the, the Venn diagram. Oh, that's, surface. that's right. That's my favorite one. I like that one. Um, let's see. That one slaps, man. I like that. That's a good one. We will chauvinist, hear that again. chauvinist, sexist, and misogynist. It's something that uh, I am. Hmm. They sound remake. like medals. Were those medals awarded at the Olympics? Yes. Um, well, at the at the uh, racism Olympics, those are held in. Um, actually, I think Canada. Do you think not, Chappelle or- would be able to do the racial draft skit today? No. No. I guess it's a good thing we got it when we did then. Oh, by the way, um, there's a new Netflix comedy special out called Burn the Boats, where uh, Joe Rogan retakes the stage after six years. Um, do yourself a favor. Skip. Yeah. That good, Obviously, huh? Obviously, fear is not a factor for Rogan, nor is humor. But no, Anyways, Rogan, uh, Rogan has fuck you money. So guess what, right. Yona? Fuck I you. I can go fuck myself. That's right. Um, that's right. Like, like Vicky Newland says, oh, no, wait, I don't have it queued up anymore. Damn it. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, I do. 
fuck the EU. All right, there we go. Let's see if this. Do you oh, have? Yeah. Do you have this Why video pulled up? Chauvinist, sexist, and misogynist. We're we're getting there. Uh, All right, so I got to pull that down. Just let me know when you're ready, and I'll I'll pull the trigger. Oh, we're ready. I'm just going to give you all just a few seconds of this because, uh, you know, I do have consideration for the audience. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to hit you with full-blown Hillary and full-blown Kamala one after the other. That's just too much. Hiller. Uh, but anyways, y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? and chauvinists and sexists and misogynists and chauvinists and hello chicago and who's ready for a dnc convention and misogynists and chauvinists and sexists and misogynists and chauvinists and sexists and misogynists and chauvinists Okay, I think that's enough, Chris. I think that's enough. I think people got the idea. All right. I, I, I was I was digging it. I don't know about everybody else. But. Uh, Make sure you send me the link for that so I can put it in the replay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wonder... Uh, you know what? Th this is my friend um, placeboing um, or placeboing, however you want to say it. Um, that video has 1.1 million views from eight years ago, but there's one that has almost 5 million views. And that is the original Hillary Clinton remix because um, Hillary Clinton is going to be the main story in Chicago. Really? So. What, what, what leads you in that direction? Because she has to be. Why? She's a media hog, just like Trump. But she in many ways, Hillary been Clinton all and, over the media, as far as I know. I haven't really heard Hillary. <clears throat> Matter of fact, everybody has come out to endorse Kamala up to this point, except, except Hillary. for Hillary. And I was pointing that out like a week ago. I was like. Where's the endorsement from Hillary? Why haven't we heard from Hillary? Where's Hillary? Like, Hillary, Hillary ain't been around, dude. Hillary wants to run again. I'm, I'm loading up the Hillary Clinton remix. Uh, hang on just a second. Let me see if I've still got hamster wheel. For a second. Yeah, you're still sharing. Uh, I can see everything. Okay. We can all, all see right. everything that you're doing right now. All right. Okay. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. <laughs> We saw. We saw. He, died. he died. We came. We saw. He died. He died. <laughs> Look. We came. We saw. He died. Look. We came. We saw. He died. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. I take it really seriously. Fuck 
for me because I'm a woman. One of my merits is I'm a woman. All these mothers vote for me because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman. Vote for me because I'm a woman. One of my merits is I'm a woman. All these mothers vote for me because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman. A woman running to be the first woman president. I cannot imagine anyone being more of an outsider than the first woman president. Who can president? be more of an outsider than a woman president? Well, I can't think of anything more of an outsider than electing the first woman president. A woman president of the United States of America. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay. I don't see it happening. I don't, I don't think that, uh, look, it, Kamila has been groomed for this role. Like pretty much her entire life. Yep. Has been leading her to this exact moment. But I and, and you Kamala. think this crusty old bitch is going to be able to come in and steal the show from the communist I, queen that is I about to have to say, her moment in the spotlight? I venture to say that Kamala is a Hillary Clinton project herself. That that the hand up Kamala's ass pulling the puppet strings is Hillary Clinton. No, that, I that, think it's that, still Willie uh, Brown. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, actually, there's probably room for two or three hands to fist up. At this point, yeah. yeah. It's probably all stretched out. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I don't want to deny. She might even have to wear like an extra type of support, you know, to keep it in place during the day. Oh, no, uh, we got another one. Another uh, caller has joined, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, wait a just, minute. This uh, is you. Uh. I think this is the first time on Get Back Carter where I've actually thrown the spotlight on some other content creators making political remixes. So Yeah, because usually you're out. just playing your stuff. Right. Shout out to Placebo Ing or Place Boing. Um I'm gonna go with Place uh, Boing. Yeah, Place I like Boing. that. I, I like it rolls right off the tongue. But uh without further ado, here is I believe uh a uh encore presentation of black hives matter three circles remix uh which is a special version that i made uh, for our little community here on liberty radio it is not available on the album uh i use the uh jack off remix on the album not the three circles remix um <laughs> but i actually like this remix the best and so it's just going to be our little remix here in our little clubhouse here. Oh, sweet. Uh, this so is we what go. we'll get a, a copyright strike on YouTube for then. Awesome. Oh, because of the Sky News. Uh, who knows? They just, they just like fucking with us. Yeah, they'll, they'll find something. Let's see what the most powerful woman in the world is up to. Kamala Harris apparently loves a Venn diagram. And gosh, she loves telling us about it. Remember Venn diagrams, those three circles, right? And then let's just see where they overlap. You will not be surprised because I have constructed a Venn diagram on this. Remember those three circles, how they overlap? I love Venn diagrams, so I just do. Whenever you're dealing with conflict, pull out a Venn diagram, right? And so you Those three circles. Those three circles. Those three circles. Live from the 300 and four. Venn diagram. Those three circles. 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 Circles. Venn diagram. 
Oh, this is where the video gets good for little forget the house and play it. All for X. Oh shit, I see it. I see the X. It's right there. Believe it or not, I took this video as an opportunity to teach people how to make bounce break weight. Well, always get the back on the just figured it out so on a venn diagram you're muted by the way uh-huh that's there how you. uh elon musk uh came up with the name of x for twitter based on this venn diagram really no he already had that he already had x He's been right. itching. He's been itching to do something with X like his entire life. Like it's his his huge South African wet dream. Yeah. To to be able to have a company called X. I don't fucking know why. He's retard. But I gotta say, nothing gets you fact harder at the end of a show than working on algebraic equations together. Yeah. We geek like that. But so like the shape that is created, like when you take the three circles on a Venn diagram, right? And like you uh -huh. remove the bubble, the, the three bubbles, and, and you just have the shape of the overlap left. Right. It kind of looks like cock and balls. Yeah. Yeah. But a, a little bit egg shaped. A little bit. A little bit. I just blew your mind, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm visualizing it, and I see it now. And I, and once you see it, you can't unsee you can't it. Unsee it. Yeah. So um. It's just so like, the, oh, I just love Venn diagrams. Yeah, you know, sure you do, honey. When we meet back next Thursday, yeah, 
uh, it's going to be in the middle of all of the Chicago melee and everything. So, well, it'll so that's it'll why it'll thought, technically already be over at that point. Right. This is and only so four days. This was your prep. These three yeah. music. So we'll we'll collection. actually, you know what? We'll actually be going on the air. Uh, as they're doing like their big grand finale, uh, coup de gras. Oh, acceptance speech. Yeah, Accept, uh, acceptance of the nomination. So they'll speech. have uh, what? They'll have the Rock come out and and rip his shirt off on national television. Is that what they're going to do? Because they've been ripping I, everything else off from the Trump campaign. So I think it's going to be even more wrestling and. Probably the biggest story Jello that, wrestling. They'll do Jello wrestling. The the biggest story that's not going to be covered in Chicago is going to be the outrage. Booty Judge will get out there with his money pox. Have you seen uh, his lips, dude? Yeah, it's called Botox. Um, but I'm going to say the biggest unreported story coming up next week from Chicago is going to be the over-the-top, completely unnecessary violence on the part of the Chicago Police Department no. beating the holy shit out of anyone protesting the genocide in Gaza. Yeah, I would and not recommend doing that in Chicago next week, ladies and we've gentlemen. We've already seen how Kamala Harris responds to people protesting about the genocide in Gaza. That's right. Shut the fuck up. She I'm gets talking very angry. Very angry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you thought it was bad when Amy Cloudboot jars throwing staplers at you, that's uh, right. Say hello to my little friend Kamala. She'll go Scarface on your ass. That's right. She'll 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 put your ass out to fight a wildfire. She'll yeah. drop you off in the middle of the fire and be like straight in the I, fucking trenches and that's you're right. never getting out. Yeah. I don't care if your time is served, slave. That's right. That's our next president, ladies and gentlemen. In these fine Soviet states of America. And so, technically, in Chicago, I'm predicting we're going to have a presidential inauguration. No need for an election. We're just going to go ahead and say she's president now. And then come November, well, what do you know? She got reelected. Yeah. Well, are we going to get an audit of the votes or anything? It's it's going to be the, the, the second most popular. I mean, it's... The, the most popular, but the second time in a row that the most popular president ever in the history ever of ever has won. Yeah. Again. That's right. We're calling it right now, August 15th, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Mark it down. <laughs> Mark it down on your calendars. That's it. We did it. It's all over. Wow. Say good night to the people. Blessings to all and be careful out there. Watch yourself. Propaganda's intensifying and Chicago's right around the corner. Oh boy. It's going to be fun. I think. Be sure and drop in tomorrow night on the call in show and join us for TMP Anarchy Live on Saturday nights. And I will, in fact, be returning to the Interwebsies next Monday night. Uh, with a belated uh, Peasants podcast, number 84. We're doing the COVID-84 episode next Tuesday because we got some monkey pox to rip on. Oh Love my. you guys. Good night, everybody.